Hello everybody. Welcome. Thank you for coming to join me. I am sorry I didn't get back with you um, right after I did part one of Jocelyn Savage R. Kelly reading. My phone went out. I've been so exhausted. I finally yesterday, I know I suppose I think do it yesterday, but I was so tired. I got some good sleep. Hi, Charlie. Hi, Latika. Hi, my baby. Welcome, everyone. Hello, beautiful, handsome Harold Lee Rush. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Oh, boy. I, you know, I was so, 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 so tired. This, this shit here. Hi, Sheila. I, I... <sighs> I'm so tired because the spirits won't let me sleep around this reading with, with Jocelyn Savage and R. Kelly. And they do me like this about all of my readings. Thank you for the hearts. I need the love. I need the energy. I slept some and I still feel like I'm sleepy. I'm really exhausted. Hi, Sean Stanley. Hi, Jaquinta. Jaquita. Forgive me if I said that incorrectly, Jaquita. Um, literally... I thank you. I love the hearts. I need all the hearts. I can't see everyone. It's not showing me a lot of people are here. It only shows me like 20 people are here. So don't get offended if I don't say anything to you. It's because I don't see you. Okay. Um, I tried to get as much information as I could uh, on the Jocelyn Savage reading She's a young lady that's 22 years old that uh, her parents introduced her. I think, forgive me if I'm getting this wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. You can type it in. I won't get offended if I'm wrong. I think that, hello, Gloria. Hello, beautiful baby. I think that her parents introduced her to him because she's a singer. She's a beautiful girl. She's a singer. And when he introduced her, he agreed to help her with the singing. And then he sneaks over to her college and he takes her from the college. And then he trapped her where she couldn't get away and he used her the sex slave and she keeps saying daddy stop it I'm fine I'm happy we know she's not fine we know she's lying he's forcing her to stay there like a lot of the women are coming out and say they were forced and even weren't grown women they were children he's fucking kids and some of them that have gotten away are now telling what he does and how he go both ways just like I said when the spirits came in here, hi Geraldine, and a few months ago in the readings, I appreciate, let me tell you something. I appreciate you all doing research behind my back because that's what you're supposed to do. So I'm not offended by that at all. That's what you're supposed to do. When I say something or when anybody says something and they're doing a spiritual reading, an intuitive reading on someone, in order for you to trust them, if you don't already know them, you're supposed to go verify things they say to show that the person is legitimate or the person's full of shit and you don't need to talk to them. So I'm totally okay with you doing that. You're supposed to do that. That's right. You're not supposed to, to stop looking for your baby, fighting for your baby, speaking out for your baby. I agree with that. I'm totally for that. That's why I'm doing this. I wouldn't do it if I liked R. Kelly. I used to listen to his stuff and I remember my son, who was a little boy growing up, he would bring R. Kelly stuff to the house and TP, I think two or something like that. And I used to enjoy his music. Now I do not listen to it. Uh, I, if I find some of it in the house, I'm going to throw it away. I can't hear him. I don't want to hear him. I don't respect him. I will not support him. I haven't been following him for years anyway. And now that I see this and I hear this shit and I'm reading this and these spirits are walking in. Well, I have company. The spirits are here. I, I, uh, I was feeling that in my eye. They're so intense. I didn't want them to leave. They've been here with me about three days. They were here with me when I did uh, part one. I was trying to wrap up the reading. Uh, with Jocelyn Savage because I've never done a reading on Jocelyn Savage. I just did it on R. Kelly and then the demon that said he was possessing R. Kelly that R. Kelly had done satanic sexual and child oath rituals to get power and fame. They came in here and started telling me the things about him. Well, uh, some more demons have come. Now, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you straight up. Some of this shit I don't want to repeat. It bothers me. 
I don't want to say some of these things that these spirits are coming here saying to me. Because at, at this point, I don't know. And I would like for them to come out, but I'm telling you, when it comes out, and if it comes out, it's still going to bother me. <sighs> We're going to be reading uh, with the cards, but I don't want to read the cards right now. Okay, can you hear me, Harold? Can you all hear me? I don't know if I need to speak a little louder or something. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Do, do, just, but can everybody hear me? Because I have the cards here, and you know what's weird? That's not really weird, though. That's weird. When I, I did the reading the other night, when I started it, and it cut off for Jocelyn Savage, the same cards that came up for Jocelyn came up for R. Kelly, which is this. R. Kelly is also in, but hello, beautiful Ishmael Bay. R. Kelly is in bondage with sex, drugs, obsessions, and sex addictions. Now, I did not finish this reading because it's so intense. And to be honest with you, it's painful to me. It's things I see that I'm glad I'm seeing to give you information since you all like my readings. And I, I want to say earlier when, when I was saying I'm glad you're checking my footwork. I know you're checking my footwork because people are secretly coming to me on Facebook Messenger and they are emailing me and some people that know my number are texting me and they're calling me and they're thanking me and they're saying, hey, I just, I found out I saw an interview. Somebody just said, yeah, he's going to hell. He needs to go, but you know what I'm seeing too? He's going to suffer before he leaves here. Now I haven't seen yet a lot of jail time for, for him, but I do see suffering that's worse. You all think it needs to be jail. He's going to jail. I just hear one of the spirits tapping me right now. So I want to be respectful to, well, it's a couple here. They have a whole bunch to say. Um, I appreciate you all letting me know you're verifying things that I said because I don't see everything. And and people are letting me know they appreciate me doing the readings. They enjoy the readings. They want me to keep doing them, especially since they are getting confirmation of things I have no idea if they're true or not. Some of them are so sick. I don't I don't want to repeat them, but you know what? I will say this. This is quite interesting. You remember when I keep saying the demon is a Batman? I call the demon Batman because it looks just like the character Batman. Real tall and fine, real jet black with that jet black X, um, outfit on and the mask, very muscular. It looks just like Batman. Well, I looked it up. Do you know that 1997, R. Kelly wrote a song for the Gotham City Batman and Robin soundtrack, he actually tapped into the Batman energy, but there's something very demonic about that because he had to do demonic things to get those types of deals. Now it makes sense. And I pulled the Batman video up of R. Kelly. There's a music video of R. Kelly from the Batman album, I never heard it, I never seen it, didn't know. And I said, I kept saying Batman, I kept saying Batman. And then the demon kept saying, Des yes, I'm trying to tell you where I came from, like when I attached myself, because this is a different demon than the one I told you about Bell in the first R. Kelly reading a couple of months ago, part one, part two. Okay, this demon, when it, I saw the Batman, and me and my friend were talking, we started looking, because I'm like, this is a Batman demon with webbed feet. And he said, what are you talking about? I said, I'm serious. The demon's been here all weekend in the past few days, and it's a king demon. It's not a low-level entity or ghost or poltergeist. No, this is a king demon in the earth. Okay. We found the new demon attached to R. Kelly, because he's full of legions of them. And you know the kings have legions underneath them. This demon is called C-A-M-A-Z-O-T-H. This is from Mexico. The Mexican Indians. I absolutely love your show. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, beautiful. I'm glad you all and you all support me and have my back when people try to attack me. Um, this is a night bat demon. It moves at night. It deals with sacrifice and death in blood. Now, that would make sense. Hello, beautiful author T.P. Horton. It makes sense because it, it sucks blood, but it deals with blood disease. 
let me tell you what this demon told me um, yesterday. He came, I was in the bathroom washing my face, like doing my beauty treatment. The demon looks dead at me and he said, I gave R. Kelly a blood disease. And I turn in the hallway and I look at him and I said, what? He said, yes. He was smiling. He said, I gave R. Kelly a blood disease. He said R. Kelly has a disease of the blood. And he said it is moving through the liver, the kidneys, and the heart. I'm, my mouth is open. It's literally like now I just turn my air down in my body. I'm just tense right now because I'm cold. My, my body's cold. I feel and there, there's a couple of them standing right here. The big male one. And there's a female. <sighs> Y'all, this is weird for me because it, it hurts me. And it really bothers me. Because I'm thinking to myself, is this real? Is this real what I'm seeing and what I'm hearing? Now, I'm sure if this is true, I know they're saying he has herpes. And he infected a lot of women, uh, including Jocelyn Savage with herpes. And chlamydia another older woman said she was homeless in a hotel and he she performed oral sex on him. he gave her chlamydia but luckily she got rid of it but chlamydia wouldn't necessarily be blood you can get rid of that this demon took me to the seals of Solomon King Solomon in the Bible there are magic seals beautiful geometric seals that people use for magic. They took me to one, because before I saw it, I started to draw. Um, he was trying to show me, the demon was trying to show me what the seal looked like. And do you all remember when we were little, at least I remember, there was a little flat, almost flat round disc. And inside of the disc, the top was clear plastic and it had a little metal ball in there that it had a maze inside of it and you move the little round disc around and you could manipulate the little metal ball to go inside of the individual clear mazes inside of it. I don't know if you all know what I'm talking about. I'm sick. I can still find one. This is what the, um, the demon, the vampire, the Batman one started to tell me to draw. And so as I drew it, I said, what does it mean? What are you trying to say to me? He said, you see how when you look at a maze and it's broken up and you can walk in or I've seen gardens with the trees cut like a maze. You start walking into the maze and you go to a certain point or you go to the left, you go to the right, you cut the corner. Then you move around in the maze, but then sometimes if you go in the maze, there's a dead end. He said, you see how there's the starts and the stops and the beginnings and the ends in the maze? He said, that's how our organization is set up with R. Kelly, where you have certain girls that are in a particular maze, in a group, in a clique. Some of them are cut off based on where they are in the organization that's set up like a maze. So some of them will meet and talk to each other based on their age, where they come from, what region, what city they're from, what the mindset is, what they plan to do with them. Some of the girls will never know each other. They will never know they exist. They will never meet based on what the girl is there for. This demon said to me again that these girls are sex trafficked and that there's a group of them that R. Kelly sold to another a group of men as prostitutes after he had already used them for sex and they're using drugs and he abuses them and he traffics them around that he takes some of them and he sold them to this other group of men now I'm wondering about girls of other races because for some reason all the girls did not look completely black to me or well, they looked if they were black they looked exotic looking they didn't all have the same look like a lot of times R. Kelly doesn't pick for what you would call aesthetically beautiful just like Jocelyn is aesthetically beautiful 
Then I looked at some of the other girls that spoke out. They were not aesthetically beautiful, at least not to me. They weren't attractive to me in the face, hair, and stuff. A lot of times, R. Kelly will pick women for energy or something about them. If they're docile, if they look up to him, if they'll ride or die for him, if they will put his life before theirs. Are they going to do things to please him or whatever he says? Are they going to allow him to abuse him and do anything? sexually with him and other people and another thing that bothered me I saw grown women involved in this and I saw grown women with children and I, I, I don't know what the fuck this means but I saw young children women with money that were close to R. Kelly and some of them were old friends they were old friends of R. Kelly that he knew and felt very comfortable with him with young children <sighs> That made me sick, but it, I, I, these women and I saw money negotiations with the babies. These were not teenagers. These were babies. These were children under 10 years old. I did not see that the women felt they were in danger to have children that young. Some of them were their children. And these were not women that were struggling and had sex with R. Kelly for money. Some of these women already have money of their own. They weren't there for that, but they see him as family and as friend. So I'm just putting this out here as they were giving it to me. And I'm going to do a rereading of it uh, after I finish telling you. Because I, I stopped writing. I, I have papers here. And I stopped writing because it's so long and... I'm worn out and this is just very painful. I don't want to look at all of this right now. I'm going to have to take a break because I'm getting ready for my father's concert anyway. And I only have two weeks to get my voice and everything ready for my father. And I can't do that and continue to do the readings like this. I literally want to cry because I'm so sad. And I, I just don't want to repeat this. I don't want to repeat this. But I'm going to tell you. The demon, as he was telling me um, that he's, he's, he's given R. Kelly a blood disease. And I'm looking and he said that he has several viruses. He said R. Kelly does not just have herpes. He asked me to go look at the HIV virus. And I looked at the HIV virus and I started to study the structure and I started drawing the structure and the structure looks, oh, let me finish what I was saying. The structure looks just like the uh, maze that he told me to draw and how they separate and they judge and group the girls off. That's why a lot of the girls may not know what another girl goes through or that a girl was in the house because they all don't hang together and meet like family. Thank you, Harold, because I'm really just trying and um, I'm not going to say I'm not going to get back on it, but right now I, I, I can't after I do this. I cannot. Um, he told me that he said there's a map and they, they go by this in different regions. He said the corporation, it starts, it's like a corporation. That's how this is run. And that R. Kelly has handlers above him. He's not doing this by himself. He didn't create this structure on his home. People tell him what to do. And they're not all black people that tell him what to do. And there's, then under the corporation, there's government, there's policy slash feds. And then under that's politicians. After that is entertainment. Under that is police. Under that street drugs, under that prostitution, under that the projects, they like to look where people are disadvantaged and, and take advantage of them. The, the, they deal with the morgues, they deal with the promoters, they deal with nurseries, they deal with elementary, they deal with high school, they deal with church. What he's saying is in every arena with children, with education, with music, with religion, with law, with politics, and then who gets through and who gets picked in entertainment. He said that a lot of time that is the structure 
and it is controlled. They determine who they pick, starting with women that literally give birth. Hey, cat, that give birth, that agree with this lifestyle and live in these demonic types of lives. Thank you, Tanya. They, they agree with this and they deal with devil worship too. A lot of these women that have these babies and like breed them for this. And then the ones that the parents are not around them. They see them at school. They see them little and they'll watch them. And come on them like a teacher. And like a music teacher. And like a, a counselor. And like a choir director. Or like a mother figure. Come to the family, spend the night. They got their tentacles and everything. You can't say this is just music. You can't just say, I'm going to take my daughter around these singles no more. Because they got them. He said, we got them everywhere. We got people groomed and trained. Sprinkled in all these areas of life and education and business and politics. They are saying that R. Kelly has gotten away with things a lot so long. Because either there was some jury tampering involved or somebody was paid off. Somebody got close to him. He would always look how he always used to get off with shit in the past. Police, people in government, dirty lawyers, prostitutes, drug dealers, business people that you wouldn't even think would do no shit like that has worked with him. The devil, this demon right here. Okay, yes, you would know to teach me about these things. He said that they have covered him because it benefits them and the secret sex and drug ring and the child ring and the child rape and the child, the murder. I'm going to go on and get into that because this is what I just said right here. Get into that. Okay. The demon left. And when I was in the bathroom a couple of days ago, the girl's here now. she been here all last night. Yeah, the judges. Because they freaks too. A lot of them get into this kind of thing. And they have to do their rituals at a certain... They have to keep their upkeep up. To keep their position. A lot of them like it. Because they feel powerful. The demon stood in the hallway. While I was standing in the bathroom. He didn't come close. He stood back. He told his girl. He said, go to Alexis. And she ran towards me and she was half naked and she started doing me like this. She said, help me, help me. I need you to help me. They trying, they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. And I said, what are you, what are you talking about? Why, how can I help you? How, how, how can I help you? Because I was doing a reading on R. Kelly and talking to the demons. I wonder what the girl running towards me. I see this girl running towards me in the spirit. I see her old body. And every, yes, the Catholic Church, they did this. And all the churches, the Baptist, the Christian Church too, look, boy lovers. And as the girls run to me, I, she hit me on the left side. The demon was on the left side. So I already know what it was because they came on the left. On the left hand path. I knew it was something dealing with black magic. And she said, please help me. And I said, well, where are you? Well, how can I help you? Because... The girl was naked and she was wet. And she said, I'm on the south side of Chicago. I said, don't you know I'm in Atlanta? And I said, is R. Kelly, do R. Kelly go to Chicago? Why would this girl come, this demon bring this girl to Atlanta and she runs on me. I need your help. And it got something to do with R. Kelly. And no wonder I said, do R. Kelly still live in Chicago or visit Chicago? No chance. We're not talking about Joe tonight. We're finishing up with R. Kelly and, and Jocelyn Savage. It wasn't Jocelyn. She's still alive. This girl is dead. She's standing there. And I'm looking at her and she can see me. Her soul had got in the body. But she said she was thrown in the river on South 
outside of Chicago. I ain't never heard no shit. Like the car don't keep up with him like that. So I'm thinking for her to say that. Now I ain't even. I'm, I'm doing the reading on R. Kelly. This was two days ago. She been in here. The demon said, do it, Alexis. I want. I don't want to take her soul. I want you to help her. I brought her down here to you. She's standing there and I'm looking at her face. I'm looking at her eyes. And she is terrified. And I said, you know, that I'm doing a reading on R. Kelly. Why are you telling me about the south side of Chicago and somebody threw you and killed you and beat you and throwed you? Oh, well, I found out, Chance, the Batman demon. R. Kelly did a song for the Batman movie in 1997 title Batman. You can see it on YouTube. The bat in the damn video. I said I was talking about R. Kelly and you, the demon brings you and you run to me and you're hitting me and she leans up against the bathroom door and we're looking eye to eye. And she said, he didn't kill me, but he had something to do with it. She said, I was a prostitute. And I met R. Kelly and I was partying. I was in that group doing drugs and I was prostituting. I was working at. So y'all, this is alleged. This is my reading. I don't know. I don't know when. Uh, I will have to look up. The times he was there, what he doing? I think he still be there. She said, I she said she didn't have no money. And she was like a groupie kind of looking up to him. And she started hanging with him and she got in the parties. And she was popping pills, doing drugs, having sex with the groups. And he used her and passed her around. And when they got tired of her, he said, she said he sold her. Um, thank you, Chaz. He sold her to this group. I seen some white men in Chicago. And she said she was working for them. They had a prostitute on the street, but she was a low level. She was poor. They was taking her money and abusing her. And when she came to me, Her skin was missing in different spots. She was already dead when she came to me, but she wanted to get back in her body because she missed her body. She loved that body. And she had a badass body too. She was almost butt naked when, I, when she came here. And I said, I know you wouldn't want to leave that body. I wouldn't either, bitch. So I'm looking at her and I'm trying to be funny, but the shit, I couldn't really crack jokes because the shit was so fucked up and she was looking at me terrified and crying and she started telling me the story. And I said, you could stay here. You don't have to leave. I'm not scared of you. I'm just more hurt and I'm terrified of what I'm seeing. And I could see her eyes. They were still intact. She looked dead at me. And so I kept talking to her. And uh, the demon was standing at the end of the hall because he wanted me. He said, talk to her, Alexis. I'm not going to take her to hell. I want you to help her. I didn't want them to. I don't want her soul. I don't want them to do this. But you need to know. You need to learn, Alexis. I want you to help her. So, oh God. I don't want to cry. I don't. I don't want to tell y'all this. Mm. Hold on, y'all. Can't be talking and crying at the same goddamn time. Oh. She said, I want to stay with you. I want to talk to you. I said, you can stay. 
As long as you want to, you can talk to me. You don't have to go. And uh, I started looking at parts of her body and she said they tortured her. And I looked at the, the left and some of the breast was gone, like on the left. And uh, I saw some type of uh, symbol. I don't know if they cut the symbol in her. She had, it was like a, a kind of looked like a pentagram. I'm not sure, but she said it was a demonic ritual that was done. R. Kelly knew this was going to happen. He did not do it, y'all. So please don't think I'm accusing him of doing it, but he knew. It, it's kind of like when he gets tired of women or they start to ask for more and, and they're not used to anything and then all of a sudden they're in that lifestyle. Oh, Sanchez, I, I was talking to her. He wanted me, he wanted her to tell me what she knew and what happened to her. And then I, since he, he doesn't want to take her soul to hell, that he didn't want this to happen to her. Obviously, demons pick and choose who they want. And he obviously didn't want to do it to her. So he brought her to me and he said I needed to learn how to help people come to terms with what happened to them and how to cross them over. And she said she wants me to help her. So she's still here. It's. It's some children here too, so I don't know um, if she had children. I don't see her mom and dad, so she might be one of those kind of girls, but they're not looking for her, and she didn't come from a wealthy family, so she was by herself. Um, that's what she was saying to me. Nobody was checking for her. She was on the streets by herself. And I'm looking at different body parts and I saw where she had been in the water and slipped like the parts of her skin started to slip and tear off. Her body was rotting, but she still wanted to get in it to come back and talk to me. And the demon stood right there. And I wrote, I just started listening and I said, oh my God, I was horrified. And she said he had something to do with it because that's what he does. When he uses them for a certain amount of time or either they start asking for more or they become difficult for him to handle or to deal with and he doesn't want to deal with the questions or the stress. He has some that he will sell. I know this might sound crazy, but y'all, I'm just repeating what I got that I don't want to repeat. And then what else part about this? I, I'm trying. Yes. I was so tired yesterday and I was like, I can't do this reading. I'm literally exhausted from this and from, from hearing what she had to say and writing it and how they broke, the demon broke down the structure of what they do and where they get the girls and the, the parts of government that protect them and people inside of them that still feed him information to help Art Kelly. When the demon started to laugh about the blood virus, he told me that R. Kelly got infected from this man fucking him in the ass. But what he said with this man was a friend. This is not a man. For some reason, the man does not look as tall and big as R. Kelly. The man is more petite and a little shorter than R. Kelly. He's a smaller man. You wouldn't even think. Because their sizes are different. So different. But he's Car Kelly's bent over and he's fucking R. Kelly. God, I hate to say this stuff. So he's fucking R. Kelly in the ass. And then as he's, there's another man. That looks like there's about two or three men and there are some women there. These women participate with R. Kelly fucking men. They're with him in the bisect. There are bisexual orgies that R. Kelly has. And these are grown older business women with money. They're not doing it. All these women that are with him are not doing it for money and fame. R. Kelly does fuck with older women. All of them are not babies. And just young women. I see some business women in there. They're grown. They, they're not no old raggedy bitch. That's not what I'm saying. But they're older, attractive women that have money and that work in businesses and cover R. Kelly and his shit. I'm telling you, I couldn't believe it. When I saw this, they like getting high, snorting cocaine, drinking, popping pills, and these women will have sex 
with R. Kelly and watch him get penetrated by a man and cheer it on that he can take a big dick. And this man was just going to town fucking R. Kelly real rough in his ass hole. And the guy kind of got a little bit out of control and he like went on the left. I don't want to repeat. I'll say allegedly. This is just what the girl showed me in the spirit and the demon. How he first got the infection. He got it from men. And he got it from women that fuck bisexual men that are also, the, these people in this group are infected. I just wanted to say that because the demon wanted to explain to me, if you think R. Kelly is the one that's passing the viruses around, he's the only one that has them, no. They fuck each other and that group has them. They spread it to each other. They, they're they within the group. And they know each other have it. And a lot of them don't fuck with condoms neither. They don't like if they're close and they're buddies. But I kind of see this guy did have a condom on that was fucking R. Kelly in the ass. And when he, like his dick came out. This is the way the demon showed me. He was going straight in, but it was kind of down at an angle because R. Kelly was face down ass up so he was hitting him down kind of like at an like crouch down at an angle and he was going straight in it kind of he slipped and he went to the left and he went to the left with the condom and I was like ow damn man you hurt and when he he's like I'm sorry I didn't mean to it then he was like uh oh man the condom broke and the demon said that was one of the times for transmission because it tore it it swole up and inflamed the lining because you know in in the the rectum like anus and rectum the tissues are very delicate they are layers of tissue but they're very thin like layered on top of each other so it's very easy when people have to be careful when they're doing anal male or female because you're a brute Tika, this is not funny. It's already very hard for me to say. So he was bruised. I, okay, Sanchez, y'all, you think I like repeating this stuff? How about goddamn TP2? Supposed to be a real nigga? I mean, this. And 12 play and all that shit. You think it's easy to see this nigga like this? And they supposed to say this shit? <sighs> And, and they panicked and R. Kelly panicked and he was like, oh, and he tried to, you know, get himself together, just hoping that there was no infection. But the guy was, the guy was infected because he's a male prostitute. He has sex with men for money. I see this guy hangs around R. Kelly and you think they're buddies. Oh, they're buddies. All right. They booty buddies. They fuck at each other. All in their motherfucking ass. But R. Kelly, he really rams deep down. All the way for the home run and R. Kelly ass. Because he liked a lot of hard slamming real hard. Not with no damn deal though. Like that little girl said the other day. This nigga like that real heat seeking missile. Heat seeking missile in his ass. He wants some. He liked, he's like Aretha Franklin, baby. You like make me feel like a natural woman. He like a nigga to make him feel like a, a nasty, dirty bitch. He don't always want no woman to fuck him in the ass. He get up frustrated like that. Girl, yes. He, yes. He like a grown man. Hey, Christina. To fuck him and dog him and run dick real hard down and pound him like he say no and he want them to say yes no that's too much daddy stop yes yeah, shut up nigga take this motherfucking dick i'm talking as big as art you know when i seen him on tmz with jocelyn savage and they was up there on that video in hollywood you know it looked like r kelly kind of had a problem with his hip dislocated the way he stand now I don't know how R. Kelly hip looked like one of them shifted out of place. Now I know why. Now I know this nigga gonna be disabled in the hips. If he keep on, I have to get a damn hip replacement from all them dicks he taking. 
because it looked it like that. And they're they young boys too, baby. I'm talking about the way I seen this nigga assault his asshole and do all kind of aerobics in this nigga ass. I mean, I got embarrassed because there's no way I could do no bullshit like that. I'm talking about, I'm just, the demon showing me, he said he do this, he been doing, he said, you know what, he took me back to about 15 or 16 years old. R. Kelly was fucking with motherfucking little boys in Chicago. When R. Kelly was a teenager, he was an undercover punk then. And I also seen, the spirit told me, R. Kelly got a female relative that he still talked to and deal with, but he pays like he weighs, so she won't come out and tell about about them trannies he fucked it with when he was growing up. She turned the nigga out. She, I'm, and it's like, I'm gonna do this debauchery shit to you, little boy. Because I sense you kind of feminine. Because our killer was kind of soft, like, for what the spirit telling me. When the mama would leave and I would see him crying, he would say, Mama, Mama, how could you leave me with them? Mama, how could you do this to me? You don't know what I have to go through. Mama, please don't leave me with them. And he was strong and took it, but it fucked him up in the head. He said, Mama, don't do this. Mama, how could you not see what they're doing to me? And it's like his mama didn't know. And now, Carkelly been paying the relative. Because she said, everybody don't know what you is. But I know. See, he won't whoop her ass and do nothing to her. That's still that wounded little boy that she got under control and she done put that demon in him. And now she know he craves to do freaky shit. And she know if a real person that was really their tail, that's his sales is going to crash. Because most of his money come from them women. And they find out you's a punk. And I can't fulfill my fantasy of one day being with you and sucking your dick. Because these niggas with titties and dicks and shit service you in your ass late at night. That's what the spirit told me. Really? Yeah, I wrote about his male lover. <sighs> I'm telling you, he can't really help it because they did that to that boy when he was young. And when he was a teenager, he was looking for dick. He was walking the street looking for dick. Then, and fucking with them little girls. Just fucking with them little boys. And, uh, but the demon don't feel sorry for him, though. So why should I? Especially with the girl that been in here. And I finally went to sleep. I said, Lord, I know I promised them this reading, but I'm too goddamn wore out. And plus, I want to see what else they got to say. I know about, I woke up about five o'clock this morning. And I said, oh, I feel better. I got to get up and turn my lights and shit off. I was so tired. I went to sleep with everything on. But I had the papers on the floor. Well, I had wrote and listened to shit they told me. The demon came back. The girl came back. And she said, hi. And I said, hey, baby. She said, can I stay? I said, you don't have to leave. She said, can I lay down? You know, I let Sandra Bland lay down and I did the reading on her. And when I did the part on R. Kelly, the baby said there was down in the basement, saw him kick his mama down in that mirror room. I let the baby get in the bed. I didn't have no problem with the girl laying down in the bed with me. It was just hard to look at her because the skin had rotted off. On the left, the breast was missing. I could see a rib cage. And the demon said, get in the bed with Alexis. So I'm looking at him like, what the fuck? And I didn't say nothing. That's extremely damn. Yes, Christina. He been paying that girl hush money. She been using the blackmail and laugh. 
about it, laugh at him to his face. And he said, Alexis, let her get in the bed. And I'm saying, I don't want, I do, but I don't because I can feel the water. Her body was wet still. I could, I guess they just wanted me to feel what that was like. And I can see in her back, some of the chunks was missing. I, I could see the bottom backbone. I could see the tailbone sticking. And I'm, I'm like, I don't, I don't, I, he said, let her lay down. I scooted over and I turned to the side and she, she said, oh. and she laid beside me. I didn't smell anything because you know, I can smell things in the spirit and see them. And uh, I just had to brace. I just started meditating with her and I started bracing myself. I started praying for her because I said, I know this is something that I've, I have to learn to do. Because like I told you in another video, I've, I've been in the bomb, embalming room and I've dealt with dead people before. And I've washed their hair and I've seen them when they were getting ready to die. And they talk to me to get out of the body and then I see them in the embalming room and then I sit with them when they're at the wake and they're in the casket and when nobody's there I sit with them one on one and I go up and I touch their face and I touch their hair if they say it's okay if they want to spend time with me so I'm used to this but to have one laying there and I could see this stuff I, I had to brace myself and I looked at the demon and I said, I said, you're okay. I'm not going to fight you. Oh, okay. You're right. And she, I finally fall asleep. Oh, that was this morning, 530 in the morning. And because she was so lonely, she said, I'm, I'm cold and I'm lonely. And I died by myself in the water. And she, they found me. I feel like this girl was found, but they don't know. I'm not sure they know like what happened or who did this to her, but you can see her. She was, she was beaten and she, somebody had sex with her. She told me she was a prostitute, but that's not the sex I was talking about. Um, like somebody had had sex with her that she knew that was a part of the killing. She told me there was more than one man that was involved in the killing. And these, for some reason, you all, I am telling you, these are white men. Hi. Hello, Haki. These are white men. Now, there are ring. Let me describe it to you. The inner circle of the white men that killed the girl, I'm seeing a circle like they drew a circle, a satanic circle. But on the outer skirts, like in the streets, you see, I see the black man selling drugs and prostituting and beating and violating the women. So the white men, like they had drugs on the street and they had men, black men working for them on the street. But when they killed the girl and they did the rituals in Chicago, the South Side, that's what she said. It was on the South Side where R. Kelly was born and grew up at. It was the white, she said, the white man killed me. And they took her down. I drew up, I drew the picture. She showed me the river. She said it was not a lake. It was a river that's running. She told me on the south side of Chicago. I never been to Chicago. I don't know anybody there. So I'm literally repeating to you what the girl is saying. And she's showing me it's a narrow river and as it's running where well, they dumped her there but they was talking to her and they hit her first. They throw her in there and as I see her going forward like this, it's a bridge. So if y'all know Chicago or if y'all can do some research and you see any one of the rivers, they got a bridge going over it looks like that in Chicago 
Oh, what she said. I said, is it the north side? She said, no. I said, where you at? She says, I'm at the south side of Chicago. I said, what? I'm, I can, I'm in Atlanta. Do you know I'm in Atlanta? She said, yes, I know where you at, but I got to tell you what happened to me. So when I looked at her and I saw the skin, I knew what it was because I've been around dead bodies that are getting ready to uh, be embalmed in different stages of decay. So I know when somebody, Harold, you said there are several that look like that in Chicago. I know you would know. We just have to research to see if these types of killings took place in Chicago. Groups of killings where white men are involved. But I'm telling you, if it's the white... Calumet River going into Lake Michigan. Okay. If it's the white man, those are the ones you see. If it's anything like that and came out with them and bodies being dumped, prostitutes, women being dumped. I'm telling you the ones you don't see is the drug dealers, the black ones that are lower level that they run the stuff, the drugs and stuff on the street level. These are that these white men put out and they like to do this kind of thing. That's what the girls say to me. Then when getting back to R. Kelly having sex with the men, there are several black women found dead. You know what? But some of these are not black or they might be half black or partial black. They all don't look like what you call a standard black. They're like lighter skin. Some of them are darker, but some of them are lighter. I'm telling you, some of them may be white. I wonder were there any white prostitutes found over on that side of town? Because this girl, even though she white, or one of them look white, says she dealt with R. Kelly now. Now, I know he be talking about the chocolate factor and all that, and we see m most of the uh, black girls. I don't, as for some reason, I, I'm not sure. We have to see because it, we just don't know. If some of them he ever dealt with women was white. Yes. Or of other races. Or just they don't care about. Yeah. Even though this girl looked white. She told me she didn't have nothing. They caught her like that. Because she needed money. She looked up to him. And then he used and sold it to them. Allegedly. That's what she told. And uh, when the demon started laughing, he said, I'm going to get him because the demon likes the girl. So uh, it, he doesn't want her soul. So that makes me feel like this girl wasn't supposed to be done that way. She's not a bad girl. That's why even though she was a prostitute, I don't care. When she said, can I, can I lay down? Can I stay with you? I said, yes, baby, you can stay. I just had to look past the with the decay and then I got over it because when she laid down and I turned my I scooted over and she lay on my back she started like um uh, you know how you like spoon somebody like you cuddle up like in your fetal position she started doing that and I knew she felt safe she knew that nobody would hurt her here so I let her, then I, I knew she wasn't going to hurt me. I, I just, even though it's spiritual, it still feels so real to me. And what I see in here is so real. I can see it. I can hear it. I can smell. I can taste. So I, I could see what her body was doing. And she let me see the decay. And it just, so I, I went to sleep. And when I went to sleep, I guess I woke about 10 or 11. I didn't see her. And then they came back in later. She's here now. She's been here the past few hours. They're listening. Because they say what I can and I cannot say. And the young man, when I was saying, he actually, the rubber tore. And that's when the demon started laughing. and said, I, I'm going to get R. Kelly. I already I gave him a blood, blood disease. And he's not going to be able to get rid of it. When I started looking at the male digestive system... I know this is supposed to be just about Jocelyn, but I couldn't look at Jocelyn because her energy is different than R. Kelly. She doesn't have a lot of filth on her, and she's not a part of this. So I needed to see him in order to see was she okay.
She's alive. He's not beating Jocelyn. And you ain't going to believe what the fuck I'm finna tell you in a minute. But when I looked at the digestive system, I looked at the male and the female. Some of that same bacterial and virus from R. Kelly is on Jocelyn's heart, liver, and kidney. But not as bad as R. Kelly. This demon does not want to do anything to Jocelyn. So they will not have the same fate. Jocelyn can heal if she gets away in time. She lives. His, the demon said, his is more severe. I cannot prove this. I pray that it comes out later. Y'all, we all got to pray that this come out. This nigga be exposed. This nigga be stopped. The demon said he's stopping him. And I keep seeing legal. The justice card here. Our Kelly has some type of legal problems around the, I'm telling you, Every time I read him, when I read Jocelyn, the law comes up. There is something going on with legal issues with R. Kelly. And it's coming up around Jocelyn as well because she is there. And these other two keep coming up. The Ten of Swords means death, disease, failure, Going up and crashing at ground zero. This keeps coming up in R. Kelly's reading. It also came up when I asked Jocelyn about Jocelyn Savage and R. Kelly reading. When I looked at the digestive system of R. Kelly, it led me right to his rectum and anus. I saw scabs inside of R. Kelly's anus and rectum from sores that have came up sore very tender to him because sometimes he aches and I'm seeing his joints ache. Sometimes it's hard for him to walk or when he walks, he's stiff and he hurts. I don't know if anybody could find out if you ever said anything about him. I'm telling you, now R. Kelly has some issues with joints and joint stiffness. Once I saw them, the sores heal and R. Kelly's, it's not, they're not all on the outside. R. Kelly has bumps, hi Viola, that appear on the inside the lining of his anus and rectum, allegedly. I saw it in his spirit. And then they real so and tend around in his ass. Then they bust. And when they just showed them to me today, they were scabbed up. He has them internally. Not just externally, which is more dangerous. Because somebody fucking him in the ass, they won't see them in there. They scab up. Then they go away. And then he has an outbreak again internally. I think that around his prostate. I think inside... Of where the prostate is very close to the intestine. Rub up against it almost. And then the kidneys and the, the, the stomach. All those things are very close in there. In between that lining I saw another virus. And then I looked in his guts. And it's full of tapeworms. I'm talking about real big long ones. This nigga's so nasty. In the inside, he's actually, his body is filthy. In the inside, he's full of worms and parasites and virus. And he's still around here fucking. And this man get high a lot. And then, yes, Christina. And then I seen that R. Kelly hate. He's very angry at Jocelyn Savage mama. From what I'm seeing right now, he more angry with the mama than and consider the mama more threatening than the daddy. He consider the mama vicious as hell. I don't know why, but he dislikes Jocelyn Savage's mother, and he's done some of this stuff with Jocelyn out of spite. The mother she needs to be careful who she talked to. I'm sure she already know this, but I'm going to say it anyway. There's somebody that talked to the mama that used to fuck R. Kelly and talked to R. Kelly still. She say she don't. She's a fucking spy and a fucking lie. 
could be more than one. I see a male and a female. They going back and forth because this woman want our killer, but he don't want our goddamn ass. No more. I'm going to deal with her. She's playing both ends. Whoever win, I'm going to be on, I'm going to be cool with both sides. And act like I'm cool with both sides so I can see which one going to win. Whichever side win, I'm going to be with it. But I want to fuck him some more anyway. God damn. You know what? This phone is going out and what I'm going to do. If y'all don't see me, that's fine. You can hear me. Cause I got to get this done. So I'm sorry that you can't look at me for the rest of it. But as long as you can hear me, you can, well, I'm gonna get this out. Okay, I'm sorry you can't hear me. I got to let it charge. I don't want to keep on breaking this up. I want to get this out so I can be done and finish with my stuff. <sighs> okay. I hear our killer is something that that uh, Jocelyn Savage mama said. I don't know if they had some words. In the past, R. Kelly and Jocelyn Savage mama. I don't know if they went back and forth and argued about Jocelyn. Or was it just the father? Or was it the mama and the father arguing with him? But it's something that he don't like Jocelyn's mother. Because the mother ain't with that shit. And the mother is very strong and very aggressive. It's like, I did not tell you could do no goddamn shit like that. You know you weren't supposed to be over there fucking. And then R. Kelly is saying, and I seen him say some shit like this before. Well, her mama just mad because she wanted me to give her some money for a shop or something. And I wouldn't do it. So now they lying on me. Nigga, ain't nobody lying on you, nigga. You did the shit. You did that shit, nigga. Excuse me, bitch slash nigga. You did it. You did it. And now it's like she want her to come home. She got me fucked up. See, I'm going to prove to her. She don't tell me what to do. You don't give me no order. So I'm going to hold Jocelyn out of spite. And I'm going to make her cut you off. I'm going to do what I want to do with her. I'm going to make her say, I'm going to show you that I am the puppet master, bitch. Ain't you heard, bitch? Ain't you heard? But do you know who the fuck I am, bitch? I'm the goddamn Pied Piper. You don't fucking talk to me in the kind of way and play with me. It's that that right there is what I heard. That's what I heard. Now, I don't know if Jocelyn Savage Mama and R. Kelly had some words where he was so angry with the mother. Because, see, I'm going to tell you about something about R. Kelly. R. Kelly don't like strong, assertive, aggressive women that stand their ground. And I heard the scene, Jocelyn Savage Mama, and I heard her on that video getting on, going in on Jocelyn. So I know Jocelyn Mama don't got damn play, so she wasn't playing the radio with R. Kelly ass and see that I, I think something was said and it pissed R. Kelly off where it's like, oh, well, I don't give a fuck that it is, your dollar, just because I know you don't like me. And you telling me what I'm going to do and what I bet. Okay. I ain't doing shit. She ain't, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to fuck with you to bother you because I don't like your tone. I don't like what you said to me, even though he's wrong. R. Kelly plays mind games like that. That's what he do, especially if a woman is in it that's very strong. And ain't seduced by him. And let him do him any kind of way. And it's very aggressive. And very demanding. And you're supposed to be. That's your baby. That's what you hear. That's what you had. And she's being violated. He wants to embarrass and hurt Jocelyn Savage Mama. See Jocelyn. A part of her is probably thinking this man want her. And love her. And it's about us and daddy. Just stop it daddy. Ugh. I wish your daddy can snatch your motherfucking ass up and bring you back down here tied up to my stop it daddy girl. You ought to be glad you got a mom and daddy like that. I wish I had one a mom and daddy fight for me like that and go in on this nigga. Somebody try. I wish her daddy could have got to him. Because somebody need to snatch her ass from my mother there. 
I'm really praying that God intervene and get that girl out over there. Or make her get her own ass out move it and take her ass home. Because it's some bad stuff I see. Some bad stuff I see. And I don't want to, I don't want to get into it all. I've already said things I don't want to say. That I probably shouldn't have said. That girl ain't got no business over there. She don't know no Bella. She don't know no Bella. That's why she's, she needs prayer because she innocent. In a lot of ways, she don't know. These things I'm telling you, that girl don't know. She don't know this stuff. But I will say, he not beating up Jocelyn. And I'm going to tell you some other funny shit I seen. R. Kelly get high. I seen R. Kelly get real high. Y'all going to think this is crazy. One reason why R. Kelly is afflicted about Jocelyn Savage. I'm getting chills right now. Jocelyn remind R. Kelly of Aaliyah. Aaliyah came up. I'm getting chills all over I see Aaliyah. A part of something about Jocelyn and the way her energy and the way she moves, it reminds my whole body's getting chills. I think this and I couldn't believe it. She reminds me of Aaliyah. Aaliyah comes up. Aaliyah be coming to R. Kelly. And that song, um, um, he was high and started crying because at your best, you a love came up to me and she was saying to R. Kelly. And um, it's another one that came up. And R. Kelly broke down crying. And that's one reason why he don't like Jocelyn Savage mama because he feel like the mama. I don't know how Aaliyah mama was. If y'all know, y'all tell me. But Aaliyah mama wasn't playing that shit neither. It kind of remind me, Jocelyn Savage mama and daddy remind me of Aaliyah mama and daddy. It's just, I know y'all going to think this crazy. I ain't, I ain't never seen this shit before in my life. That came. I seen that shit tonight. And I seen Aaliyah over there. Now she's not exactly like Aaliyah. But it's something about her. And he, he plays this game with Jocelyn. You're nice one minute. You're nasty another. You give her something. And then you take it back. You mean to her and you, you don't speak, walk past and don't speak to her like you don't even know who she is. And then you blame her for treating her that way because he conflicted in his mind. I don't know what to do with her. Maybe I should let her go. Maybe I should send her home. But then I know I ain't going to see her no more. I ain't going to kill her. I ain't going to let nobody else kill her because a part of her, I see her live. But at the same time, he ain't helping her with her damn singing and shit. He don't want to lose Jocelyn because a part of her, the, Aaliyah come around with that girl over there. I know y'all think this some bullshit. I don't even want to say this shit because I don't like him and I don't like what he's doing. But I am telling you, this man mind is fucked up because he is not over Aaliyah. Aaliyah be coming in there. Now, I remember... I remember I'm getting chills too because I ain't never seen no shit like this and it's make me mean I got to read Aaliyah because she's standing here right now. Now I remember that time when we kept asking Aaliyah was you fucking R. Kelly? Because remember the mom and daddy got in it and took Aaliyah from R. Kelly and gave her to Missy Elliot that she thought working with Timberland and shit and making some hot shit and having them sexy clothes on. He had Leah with that same covered up shit like Jocelyn and them other girl be wearing they can't see, can't see no skin on their damn body. You can see they chin and round they damn head. That's about it. Then when Leah got over there, she started being sexy and beautiful and singing and blossoming. Okay. And then they asked Leah, was you fucking? R. Kelly, she going to say no. And she talks soft like Jocelyn. Oh, I just, no, he was just my friend and we just worked together. Okay. 
R. Kelly was fucking her because I seen R. Kelly fucking her. And it was very sweet, very passionate, and very intense. R. Kelly was real strong out on Aaliyah. He still strung out on a leave. No, that girl was too young. He had no business fucking her, but he was in love with Aaliyah. He still is. And she, she really liked it, Ira Kelly. But she couldn't admit it because her mama said, we ain't having this fucking shit. I don't know what the fuck wrong with you. And the mama shut it down. And I know the daddy too. And the uncle, I think, introduced her to R. Kelly or something. Took her ass over there. Set that shit up. But the mama said, oh, hell, motherfucking no. And the mama pulled it apart. Aaliyah visits that man. And then when he looks at Jocelyn, he have to catch himself. Because it's a certain way Jocelyn will say something. I know this is sounding sick to y'all. I didn't want to admit this. But I'm telling y'all what I saw. I didn't catch this bullshit until tonight. And I said, oh, I'm glad I waited. I got to tell them this right here. Because this right here, take the, got this the kicker. This is the kicker. That's one of his attachments to that girl. Now, I didn't say that she was going to spend her life over there. Because she not. I'm just telling you that he is saying... They are not finna do to me what Aaliyah's parents did to me. And he was so obsessed with Aaliyah. When she went with him, he was secretly following to see what she was doing. And the thought of her being with another man tore him up inside. It made him enraged. And he took that shit out on other young girls. Because it was something he wanted, wanted to be. He had wanted to be with that girl. Marry, have children, everything. It didn't matter how old she was. Just her image, her energy. He was so captivated and obsessed with that girl. And he still goddamn is. And if anybody he meet has that essence or some of the essence of that girl, he's going to have them around. Plus, he done groomed her on how to be because it reminds him. <sighs> yeah. And I wrote this. Uh, okay, I'm going to get off of that, y'all. I just had to drop that on y'all. I know y'all weren't going to believe that shit. Uh, okay, I done got on the infection. I can't do the card reading right now, though, y'all, because I got to hold the phone. I'm sorry, y'all. When I do, and I've talked to other psychics that have this problem and intuitives, it's not just me. They buy a lot of phones because those spirits will drain a phone. Now, I'm telling you, I have not even been on this phone for the past few hours. It's been on a charge because I want to make sure that I could do this for you all. Because this is such a special reading to me. And it is such a fascinating reading to me. I have not seen Aaliyah, but Aaliyah came to me uh, about a month ago. And I said, well, I'm not going to get into that one. Because I thought it would be so deep, but I briefly looked at her. I think around the time I looked at Aaliyah and saw her in the underworld with Hakate was when I was doing Sandra Bland. And I said, hmm, so Aaliyah is still in the earth realm and she let me see her. And I started looking at the crash and looking at the documentary on her and looking at her uh I think she's in a mausoleum. She's in a beautiful place where the her her casket is like behind the wall. It's a very elegant place. I think it's in New York. She doesn't have a grave site uh, outside on the ground. I think her father, because he was so heartbroken, he died. And uh, I think she's buried near her father. I'm not sure how the mother's doing because when I tried to look for the mother, I didn't see anything for Aaliyah's mother. I don't I don't know if she's alive. If you all can find out something, please let me know if the mom is still in in her body. Um, and when I briefly looked at Aaliyah and then I said, oh, no, because I know this is going to be a ride. So. I, I put it on the back burner. I said, maybe when I'm resting and I've done my father's tribute, I'll get back to her. She comes up tonight. I can see her now. She's she's in here with me at the other side of the table. She gave me permission to say, she said she loved R. Kelly. 
but she was a little girl, so she could have thought she loved R. Kelly. She still has kind feelings. It was the way R. Kelly would talk to her. It was the way he would engage her. Y'all don't know how R. Kelly is. He would whisper to that girl and seduce that girl out of her ass and got her little young pussy and sweet talk that little girl and sang to that little girl and beg her for her ass. Ain't nobody gonna know. Do this for me, baby. Please, baby. I won't tell nobody. I love you. The way he would talk to Y'all don't know him. She let me, she she's she's smiling. She said, mm-hmm. <laughs> she's she's standing right here with me. She's she's okay with she said, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's young, never been with a man. Had lived life. So when he's doing this to this little girl, he has her by herself. He's begging her and he's making her a star, you see. At the same time, she doesn't know. She can't tell her mom. He's like, please, you know they're going to kill me. Please don't. I see him jumping up, pulling his pants up. Let, let me clean you off. Please, you can't. You know they're going to lock me up. You won't see me no more. Please don't. You can't tell on me. Come on, let's hurry and wash you off. I can't get you pregnant. Because he didn't use a condom. And I'm wondering, did she get pregnant? Because he said, you got to help me. Yes, he took advantage of because, but he really was obsessed with that girl. He took it very hard when she was killed. And he said, you can't, please, you can't get pregnant. You know they're going to kill me and that I won't be able to see you no more. I'm saying, she's, she's saying, mm -hmm. she's not mad at him now, y'all. She's forgiven him. She looks the same. The way I, I see her now, and she's got her stomach out. She's got her torso out. She's got like a black bra with the diamonds all over the, encrusted over the breast. She's got a belly ring in, like a diamond in her belly. It's small though, because you know how she was. She's always very classy and very elegant. And she has these black pants on and they have the diamonds around the front and, and the vagina. And she's got these black boots on and they, they're like, they look like what she'd wear for dance. And she's got her hair down. And she's got the really strong exotic eye. And the pouty red lip. What are you saying, Adrian? I see him totally different now. I don't respect him at all. But she, she's saying she's forgiven him. She sees, she's starting to see. How he is. She still has love for him, but she's very sad about the things. Oh, she says she knows about the lake. Okay, that's 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 different because I saw the river. Now she's mentioning something about a lake. Aaliyah has been... Oh, God, I hope this is not another reading. Because I didn't know that she was over there. And she's seeing things now, and she... Because R. Kelly summons her. He talks to her. He calls her name. Y'all, this is so sad. This is very... Okay, her father just popped up. He, he don't want to hear none of it. Aaliyah's father. Her father's with her. Hello, Dad. Thank you for protecting your daughter. Can you please, I'm getting chills, can you please go to Jocelyn Savage's mother and father? Open a way, help to find a way because you all are on the other side and now you are here and you see what's going on over here. Help us. Help them find a solution to get justice for their daughter. Jocelyn Savage, that's going through the same thing you went through with Aaliyah. Y'all, we have to. We have to pray for justice and protection for her that she's safe until she gets home. Now I see that she will stay alive with him because he has a weakness for her because 
of some of that essence that reminds him of Aaliyah. Oh boy, I'm getting some turbulence here. This is some crazy shit I'm getting here right now. But whoa, whoa, I didn't, whoa, whoa, oh my God. There is jealousy here and competition and fighting. Calm down. I didn't mean it that way. Ooh. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. She tried to pull my hair. Um, oh my gosh, you want to hit me? I, 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 I never been through no shit like this. She doesn't want me to talk about The daddy ain't having it, but she don't want me to say nothing about Jocelyn. Oh, hold on, I gotta ask for protection. I, I didn't know Aaliyah had this fire. If this is her. But you know what? I'm wondering about... I was going to tell you something. I don't know if I'm crazy, but I've seen Jocelyn can have the same kind of fiery temper when, when pushed or if she has to prove something to R. Kelly. I actually see how he has some of those girls fight each other for his attention and to prove their loyalty. They'll do anything for daddy. I literally see he makes them do like these things to prove how much do you love me? Do you love me more than her? She's jo No, this is not Jocelyn here because she's still in a human body. She's in a flesh body. This is a Leo. Our daddy jumped in. I see that's why our daddy must have came because he knows Leah can have a temper, but I've never heard anybody say she has a temper. So I don't know if this is her or this is another entity that looks like her. I cannot. She did not want me to say that there was another woman that reminded him of her. See, that tells me there was something between those two. I didn't say she looked just like you. I said she was similar. She's very mad at me. Her, her father I was right here he he says he says this is what I'm talking about right here this is what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm here I'm seeing something I never saw no it's not it's her it looks just like her and her father is dead that's why I see him with her it's not a familiar spirit because she's you know what I'm not gonna even repeat it, it it's her. It's her. You have to remember something. This is coming to me totally different now. Aaliyah didn't leave R. Kelly willingly, remember? They were forced apart. And she always took up for his ass. And said there was no fucking. She didn't want to leave the nigga alone. And you could watch interviews with them in the past and see how they were sitting under each other. The nigga dick was hard sitting beside her. See what I'm saying, Catherine? This ain't, this is not a familiar spirit. Because the daddy showed up before she went off on me. And I'm wondering why is the daddy here? Now I know to see how she turned when I kept saying, oh, he liked Jocelyn. Oh, you know, she reminded her. And the more I kept saying it, she told me to shut my mouth. For she jumped on me and I. You know what? Let me take that damn shit back. That character. When she played that vampire. That's how she is right now. Go back and look at Aaliyah as that vampire. That part of her is what I'm seeing. It had to be in her because she played that role. This shit flip seat. Okay, I ain't gonna send that because she got a two. She got an attitude. And I, I always have love, Aaliyah. I didn't know. I didn't mean no harm. I didn't mean no harm, but I, 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 I picked it up. 
Y'all, I picked up that connection I had to tell y'all. And you see when I started talking about it, look at what happened to my phone. The daddy standing here and he, he trying to console her and get her mind right. You know, she held that against them. That's what I'm seeing now. Yeah, Catherine, she held that against her mom and daddy. Yeah, Jessica, that's now I see. I remember, you know, she was very aggressive. You know I mean? and, and now she just showed it. Tell a mean little thing. She was real little and red, but that fucker got a temper on her. I think she just did. Don't say that. I'm going to sleep tonight. I'm going to have to apologize. I'm sorry, Aaliyah. I'm sorry. If that's you, I am so sorry. I did not say that you had a replacement. I did not say that. I said that the, the main, the, the girl remind the main. That's of you. That's what I said. That's. I ain't gonna say no more about that about her. I'm. This never happened to me before with Aaliyah. I I've never. She never come in here like this. I I didn't know. Oh Lord, some grabbing my hand. It ain't her though. She's standing off from me. She's standing off from me. She got an attitude with me. The male. They're gonna talk to her. They're gonna. I'm going to talk to her because I see I can't say that no more. I ain't going to say that no more. I'm sorry. I was just trying to trying to break down to everybody what I see going on. I didn't. I don't like to offend spirits because then they'll fuck with me. I'm, I'm not. I'm not trying to do that. I was just trying to get to the truth. I'm trying to tell y'all how I figured out what I never heard nobody say. She, she'll be all right. She, I didn't mean no harm. I didn't know it was going to trigger that because she was the one that was telling me earlier and how she would move and she would sing to him and she could see, he could see her. He could hear her. He feels her presence because he's always thinking about her. When she come around and she starts singing the songs that he said, you remember this, Aaliyah? You remember that? And don't nobody know. I think that I know he started singing and, and, and it was the songs that he worked on with her. This has nothing to do with the world of date girl. This has to do with some pussy and dick jealousy. That's what this is about right here. She don't want nobody else. See, she had to smile about this shit and take this shit well because her mama and daddy and them was looking and she was young and said, you ain't gonna go that way, you gonna go another way. And then you seen around Jay-Z, you seen around Dama Dash and she seemed like she was happy and moved on. But they were sick. I love Aaliyah too. They were secretly watching each, each other. Yeah, Christina, she be over there with him. I didn't know. I didn't know that I got back beat the shit tonight. And I said, that's, that's a connection. That connection's still not broken. Because she come in and out and he'll get how he start calling her. He start to call her and meditate and think about her when his mind get real open and high. And she comes to where he is. See, she liked that, see. When I long as it about her, she liked that. Talk about no another bitch that took a place of remind this nigga of her. See, that's she she calm now. I didn't know because I just never came. I, I never seen her like this. I never seen no man she was attached to. She's still attached. Yes, Christine, I figured that shit out. I what? I looked now for her right now, said Leah. She said, uh-huh, all those all dirty dick, yeah, yeah, and it's still something with, between them. So this girl is in the physical body, and that's like a piece of her. So what is this about? How are you really? No, I, that's tied to the R. Kelly and the Jocelyn Savage situation, the girl that's still with R. Kelly. That's what this is. I see her. That's what I'm, that's what, well, I guess you didn't hear. So I, I can't repeat it. But anyway, yes, Adrian. Yep. Je jealous. Cause she's thinking I'm saying she's replaced that. That can never happen. He's so, that's a soul 
they are soulmates. They knew each other from before and were separated before. And now that, that she's physically not here, she still, there's a deep soul link. She still comes. He calls her. She comes. Even when he doesn't call her, she'll come and see what he's doing and who's around him and has somebody taken her place. This is really weird. I know a lot of you think it's crazy. I'm going to move on because I have never experienced that. Aw, Aaliyah. And I'll, I'll do another reading for her. We can get more into her. My cousin Ian said he loves you. <laughs> we all love you. We miss you so much. And if you ever want me to, I'll do a reading and I'll share with you. I'll share with everyone what you're saying. Because she couldn't, no, could never replace. Me. Right, right. Nobody can replace her. No, Joe's Joe is in transition. Remember, and someone was kind enough to to check up on the situation with Paris and Joe and sent me um, an interview where Paris said she spent a couple of hours with. Joe was talking about the new generation, just like I was telling you, I heard her say. Let me see. Uh, what am I missing? I, 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 Y'all, I don't, I'm not sure if my phone will hold because I really want to do a reading on Jocelyn. I see what I see. I don't, I'm not sure, you guys, if I have uh, your tech. Girl, mine mess up all the time. Let me see. I don't know if it will give me, I want, I need to sit the phone down, you guys, and do, I remember you saying he was being confronted by ancestors. Yes, that, that was, that's a phase to go to the other side. Th before they go, they also have to certain beings not, not everybody based on your bloodline they have to stand in front of a tribunal so he had to I'm, I don't know if I got enough charge to read her kind of scared to take this out no I don't y'all I'm talking about here you see what I'm talking about I'm not going to be able to finish and do the card reading on Jocelyn Savage but I wanted to tell you, I mean, because for you all that know me, you know, I don't need a card. All this stuff I've told you, I did not use a card to get the spirits to come in and talk to me. And hello, Mickey Howard. It's an honor to have you, beautiful goddess. I love, love, love you. <laughs> I love Mickey Howard. I Y'all, I got to come back because the phone, again, they zap my phone. And I can't do the card reading because I, I want to do the cards on, on, on Jocelyn Savage. So what I'm going to do is give me a couple of days and I'm going to just sit and read her and be quiet. And I'm going to read R. Kelly because I wanted to do the written part that I wrote down what the spirits were channeling to me. And then I'm going to tell you what she says. Don't be mad at me. I can't help it that they drain my, they drain my phone. Uh, especially, you know, it's when Aaliyah came in. When I started reading, picking up Aaliyah's energy, that phone says, <laughs> I started picking that connection up between Aaliyah and R. Kelly. All right, Beyonce, I am not going to read Beyonce, and I have told you I am not going to read Beyonce. So don't, I, I'm not going to respond to that. I tell you, I'm not going to read Erica Badu. There are a couple I am not going to read. I am not going to read Mickey. You already, I told you all that. I love Mickey. So I will never say anything fucked up about Mickey. <laughs> okay, y'all. I gotta go. But I'm gonna, I love you all. And thank you for having my back. And I'm gonna be back. I'll try to come back tomorrow so we can play with the cards. And I can break down some more of Jocelyn Savage and whatever questions you got. I love you all.